The iPhone SE 2 is finally here. Yes, the second generation of one of Apple's most beloved products, the iPhone SE, which was originally introduced back in 2016, is finally here. The $400 flagship iPhone. Well, kind of. And this will indeed be one of Apple's best-selling iPhones of all time. So, without any further ado, here are not 5, not 10, not 15, but actually 20 interesting facts about Apple's new iPhone SE 2020. So grab those snacks, that popcorn, those drinks, that hand sanitizer, everything you need. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Okay, so the first one is, why is it called the iPhone SE? Why not iPhone 11 Lite or iPhone 9? Well, SE actually comes from a special edition. Back when the original iPhone SE was introduced in 2016, Apple already had the iPhone 6S out, and they were just about to launch the iPhone 7. The iPhone 6S was already the second generation iPhone to use the new design. However, many people actually preferred the old iPhone 5 and 5S design. That and the smaller 4-inch display compared to the 4.7-inch display that the iPhone 6 came with. So, in 2016, Apple brought back the iPhone 5. But you see, the iPhone 5, which came out in 2012, already had some very outdated hardware in 2016. So what Apple did instead was actually put the iPhone 6S hardware, the most recent iPhone that they were selling, inside of the iPhone 5's body. And they called it the iPhone SE, or iPhone Special Edition. Pretty much like buying an old classic car and refurbishing it with a brand new engine. So, we ended up getting the same performance as on the iPhone 6S. The same CPU, the same amount of RAM, even the back camera was identical. So the only thing that you were missing out on was the more modern design of the iPhone 6S, the larger and better display, and the front-facing camera, which was quite a bit better on the 6S. But I mean, other than that, you literally had the exact same phone. Just $400 compared to $650 that the iPhone 6S used to cost. So, after the success of the iPhone SE, consumers were eagerly awaiting the second generation. Like, we've had so many leaks on this. Leaks showing a smaller iPhone X uh, with a squared off frame, or even an iPhone 6 body with updated specs. I mean, we made so many videos on the iPhone SE 2, even back in January 2018. But it never really ended up happening. Instead, we ended up getting reports that it was actually cancelled by Apple for an unknown reason. And now, we have it. More than two years after we started seeing the leaks, the iPhone SE 2020 is finally here. By the way, this is just an iPhone 7 because Apple doesn't send us anything. Apple doesn't like us. So, we'll be getting ours in about a day or so. Stay tuned for the live unboxing. Now, the second thing that you should probably know is that since this is literally the same design as the iPhone 8 from 2017, which looks the same as the iPhone 7 from 2016, which looks the same as the iPhone 6s from 2015, which also looks the same as the iPhone 6 from 2014, at least from the front. So, some cases will fit, but not all of them will. You see, the iPhone SE and the iPhone 8 have literally the exact same thickness at 7.3mm thick. The iPhone 7, on the other hand, and the iPhone 6s were thinner at 7.1mm, while the iPhone 6 was just 6.9mm. Um, that was actually the thinnest iPhone that Apple ever made, fun fact. And because of this, not all cases will work. So iPhone 8 cases, they will. iPhone 7 and 6s cases might, if you have some cases that are not super tight on the phone. But iPhone 6 cases are not going to fit the iPhone SE, just because of that extra 0.4mm in thickness. Now, design-wise, from the front, you won't be able to tell the iPhone 6 from the 6S, from the 7, from the 8, and from the SE. They all look identical. From the back, though, there are a few differences. The 8 and the SE both have a glass back, while the 7 has a dark aluminum back, and the 6S and the 6, they both have a light aluminum back. Another change is that the Apple logo is now centered, just like on the iPhone 11s, as opposed to being more towards the top, like it was on the iPhone 8 and all the ones before it. Now, another design change that we got is in terms of the colors. So we get three colors now, we get black, we get red, and we get white, compared to four colors that the iPhone 8 came in, which were space gray, red, silver, and gold. And I don't know how many of you have noticed, but there are actually quite a few changes here. So the black is actually darker than space gray, and I think this is the first time since the iPhone 6 uh, when Apple isn't calling an iPhone space gray anymore, so I'm, I'm okay with that. Also, the white is now much brighter than the previous silver color, and the white model also comes with a black front now. So no more white front at all on the SE. And finally, the red color is pretty much identical to the one that we got with the iPhone 8. The only small difference here 
is that before Apple used to give a percentage of their product red item sales to fighting HIV. And now those proceedings would actually go towards fighting COVID-19 instead. Okay, so now something that the SE is lacking is 3D Touch. This did get removed from all the iPhone 11s last year, and instead Apple's just using the haptic engine and a long hold to simulate 3D Touch. So if you're a big fan of peak and pop and those, you know, force touch wallpapers, well, that's all gone now. We're not entirely gone, but it just doesn't work as well as it used to. Strangely enough, the weight is still the same as the iPhone 8 at 148 grams. The thickness is also the same at 7.3 millimeters, and the battery life, which I'll cover in just a second, is also the same. So I'm not really sure what Apple did with that extra space inside um, after they removed 3D Touch. Like, what happened with that? Now, the next big change when it comes to the iPhone SE is Wi-Fi. So the iPhone SE now comes with Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi 802.11ax, which can give you speeds of up to 9.6 gigabits per second compared to around 6 to 7 gigabits per second of Wi-Fi 802.11ac or Wi-Fi 5. But the biggest difference here is when it comes to the bandwidth. So Wi-Fi 6 can actually support four times the number of devices connected with longer battery life and much improved network efficiency. In English, if you have a Wi-Fi 6 router and a bunch of Wi-Fi 6 devices, they should all run incredibly smooth even when the network is heavily congested. Fun fact, not even the MacBook Pro 16-inch or the MacBook Pro 2020 got Wi-Fi 6. The iPhone 11 did get it as well, so we do have it on the iPhones, and the iPad Pro 2020 also got it. And then the cellular speeds have also been improved. We now have gigabit class LTE, so while this is still 4G, we can now get speeds of up to one gigabit per second, again in 4G, which previously, uh, these, these had a limit of about 300 megabits per second. So that's a massive improvement. Like honestly, at these speeds, you don't even need 5G because you already have it. And something that apparently the iPhone doesn't need is a Yuan chip, you know, the ultra wideband positioning chip that the iPhone 11s added. That chip will be used for precisely locating those upcoming Apple AirTag trackers. The iPhone 11s have it. Interesting enough, the 2020 iPad Pro doesn't have it, um, but that's likely due to the fact that not as many people will be walking down the street with iPads compared to, you know, people walking by with iPhones. But the SE is an iPhone, and considering how popular it will be, it's quite a shame that we won't get improved AirTag tracking capabilities with the SE as well. But something that we do get with the iPhone SE is dual SIM support. Now, we don't really have an actual dual SIM slot, it's still a single SIM, but the SE now supports eSIM as well. An eSIM is essentially an embedded or an electronic SIM, so you just go into your settings and select the carrier from there. Not only does this make it so much easier to add a phone plan, but if your phone does get stolen, uh, there's no way for the thieves to remove the SIM card and block your network connection. Which means that as long as the iPhone is literally turned on, you should be able to quickly find it and locate it via Find My. And a really cool feature that the SE comes with is something called Express Card Power Reserve. That's this feature in Apple Pay where you can have Express Cards set up. Essentially cases where you don't have to scan your face or authenticate in order to use Apple Pay. Now these Express Cards are usually used for public transport. I actually used one um, in London when I was in London and I was on the uh, London Underground. It's pretty cool, you just walk next to the reader and you just wave your watch you, without having to, you know, double tap the uh, the side button. And same goes for the iPhone, it kind of works the same as, you know, having just a contactless card, really cool. Now, what this Express Car Power Reserve feature does is that even after your iPhone discharges completely, as in you cannot, you cannot turn it on, uh, you can still scan your iPhone and get onto public transport. It essentially saves a tiny bit of power in order to power that NFC chip. Pretty cool stuff. The iPhone 11s, by the way, in case you're wondering, they have it as well. And speaking of the iPhone 11s, the SE, to some extent, has the exact same camera as the iPhone 11s do. Now, we don't get the zoom module that the iPhone 11 Pros come with, or the ultra-wide-angle module that both the 11 Pros and the regular 11 come with. Instead, we get a single camera module. Now, that camera module itself is said to be pretty much identical to the iPhone 8's camera, or the iPhone 10's main camera, so the quality there is pretty good. But on top of that, we also get the same image processing as found in the iPhone 11's, thanks to that Apple A13 processor. And realistically, this is an even bigger improvement than just the camera system itself, meaning that the photos coming out of this phone will look almost as stunning as they do on the highest end iPhone 11 Pro Max. In fact, Apple has even shared some photos coming out of the iPhone XE's camera, and they look absolutely stunning. This might just be the very best camera on a smartphone at this price. The only competitor that it has would be the Pixel 3a. 
and the video performance is excellent as well. It still records in up to 4K 60 frames per second, but now we even get an extended dynamic range, which is made possible thanks to that new Apple A13 processor. Aside from this, we also get some new video features such as Quick Take Video, which just like on the iPhone 11s, it lets you hold on the shutter button and it will automatically start recording a video. And we also get stereo audio recording during video, which is something that we didn't have on the iPhone 8. And to my surprise, the iPhone SE also comes with portrait mode. Yes, portrait mode, the one that was introduced on the iPhone 7 Plus back in 2016, thanks to the fact that it had two camera modules. Well, this is now all done through software on the SE, as we now have a single module, and this is actually done in real time. All of that thanks to the new Apple A13 processor. Not only that, but we also get all portrait mode effects that we get with the iPhone 11 Pro, which, you know, has three camera modules compared to just one. So we get those six effects such as studio, high key mono, and so on. Okay, so these were all the new back camera features. Now when it comes to the front camera, it is pretty much the same one as on the iPhone 8, which had the same front camera as on the iPhone 7. So this is a seven megapixel sensor with an f2.2 aperture. Video recording is unfortunately still limited to 1080p 30 on the front compared to 4K 60, for example, like we have on the iPhone 11s. But something that is indeed new is that we also get all the portrait mode effects on the front camera as well. You know, the ones that actually require that massive Face ID camera system uh, on all the iPhones from the 10 and upwards. Yep, porch mode front. Those porch mode lighting effects, those are also there. So I'm really surprised that Apple managed to add all of those in with just a single camera module. But something that we don't get are the Animojis. It seems like now um, these still require the Face ID camera on the front, which creates a 3D depth map of your face. Apple just cannot do this with a single lens and purely through software, at least not for now. But here's the thing, if Apple can already do all of this with just one lens, you know, portrait mode, with just one lens, I would happily just get rid of that entire notch in favor of just a single small front-facing camera cutout, like on a lot of Android phones. Like, please don't tell me that the only reason why Apple's keeping this is uh, an emoji support. <laughs> Please don't. I mean, obviously there's Face ID in itself, uh, which if done properly can actually work with a single module. So fingers crossed, it's not happening with the iPhone 12, video on that soon, but it is happening or might be happening further down the line. Really keeping my fingers crossed for that. Moving on to the storage, we still get 64 and 128 gigabytes options like we did with the iPhone 8, but now we also get a 256 gigabyte model. So if you always wanted the very portable iPhone with a ton of storage, well now is a pretty good time to get one. Now when it comes to the battery life, even though we do get the Apple A13 processor, which is the same extremely power efficient chip that the iPhone 11s also got, we don't really see any battery improvements at all. Apple's still rating this at 13 hours of video playback, which is exactly the same as the iPhone 8, the iPhone 7, and two hours more than the 6S and the 6. Also, fun fact, I think this iPhone, the SE, might actually be the most powerful iPhone ever made. As in more powerful than the 11 Pro and the 11 Pro Max. And here's why. So it doesn't need to have the exact same processor as the iPhone 11 Pro Max, the Apple A13 chip, which is at the moment the most powerful processor in not just any iPhone, but also any smartphone on the market right now. But you see, the 11 Pro Max or even the 11 Pro, they have much higher resolution displays a 2688 by 1242 resolution display in the case of the iPhone 11 Pro Max versus just 1334 by 750 on the SE. So this translates to 3,338,496 pixels on the iPhone 11 Pro Max versus just over 1 million on the SE. So the SE has 3.33 times less pixels to render than the 11 Pro Max does, meaning that the performance would actually be better and you would get more frames per second on apps on the SE compared to all the other iPhones. Too bad that the display is only 60 hertz and you won't be able to see those extra frames. Something else that you won't be able to see is the amount of RAM that this iPhone has. That's because Apple never tells you how much RAM their iPhones or even iPads have. On the iPhone 11s, we have four gigabytes of RAM, which to be honest, was never really enough for me. YouTube especially keeps reloading from scratch pretty much every single time I launch it. The iPhone 12s are said to come with six gigabytes of RAM, but ESC, only comes with three gigabytes. Like for most people that should be fine, but I just wanted to mention it regardless as you will have half the amount of RAM compared to the upcoming 2020 iPhones. So multitasking won't be as good on the SE. So definitely do keep that in mind. Also the SE, same as the iPhone 8 and the 7 before it, 
uh, is water resistant. So we have an IP68 water resistance of up to one meter and up to 30 minutes. However, same as all the iPhones before it, if it does break when it's underwater, the warranty would actually not cover that. Warranty damage is a bit of an odd one. You see, so many manufacturers nowadays, I mean, even OnePlus, they do promote it, but if your phone breaks, well, um, they won't cover that under warranty. And finally, I'm not sure how many of you know this, but the iPhone SE does indeed support fast charging, just like the iPhone 8. Now, in the box, you only get the same painfully slow 5 watt charger that we got for so many years now. But if you buy a more powerful charger, or if you simply have a MacBook charger, and you just uh, buy a USB Type-C to Lightning cable, then you can actually get your iPhone charged to 50% in just 30 minutes. Also, if you don't have a fast charger or a MacBook charger, and you just need a very good one that's also affordable, I left some links to a few options down below. And if you use those links, you're also supporting the channel. So, thank you. So yeah, there you go, iPhone SE 2020. A pretty interesting device. We should be getting ours in just a few days, so stay tuned for some videos on the iPhone SE 2020. Again, Apple doesn't really like us, so we don't really get stuff or anything from Apple. So, yeah, that sucks. But anyways, if you want to buy an iPhone SE and you also want to support a the channel, then definitely consider using those links, again, below. They're affiliate links, so we get a commission on every purchase that you guys make, and you don't have to pay anything. Uh, just that we get a small commission which helps support the channel and everything that we do here at Zenofec. Do consider joining the zone if you want to further support the channel and of course don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications if you want to see more videos like this one. So yeah, thank you for watching, stay tuned for some more cool videos in the upcoming days. I'm Daniel and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenofec, signing out. Cheers.